welcome everyone for the uh, to the uh, physician assistant jumpstart. This is our agenda for today's event. And with uh, without pause, I'm gonna invite the CAC Graduate Institute team to introduce their brand new program. I'm gonna stop my share and feel free to share your screen. Thank you, Christina. I wanted to um, really quickly while Professor Audi is getting the presentation up, introduce myself. My name is Sharon Palma. I work at Keck Graduate Institute as a senior admissions outreach representative. And I have two wonderful ladies here with me who will be talking about the physician assistant program. And I'll go ahead and let them introduce themselves. Hi, thank you so much for inviting us. Uh, my name is Sonia Audi. I'm the founding program director of this program. And we also have Dr. Kriski Eskes, who is our director of didactic education. And both of us um, are not known for our brevity, but we're gonna try to be as quick as we can in this 15 minutes uh, that we get to spend with you and tell you all about our exciting new program. So first it helps to know who Keck Graduate Institute is. We are the seventh member of the prestigious Claremont Colleges here in Claremont, California. Uh, so we are one of two graduate institutions and there's also five undergraduate institutions associated with the Claremont Colleges. We are celebrating our 25th year this year uh, because we were established in 1997 and we have a focus institutionally on entrepreneurship and innovation. This is a look at our program. Uh, we are a 27 month program with the first 15 months in the didactic phase or in class. Uh, and then we also have our final 12 months in the clinical phase. So we are uh, targeting 40 students for our first class, uh, which is starting in fall of 2022, a subject to accreditation, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, but if you are applying in the next cycle, you would begin in fall of 2023 and graduate in 2025. So what differentiates our program? So a couple of key characteristics about us is that uh, we have a focus on leadership and entrepreneurship. And we do that through our didactic coursework as well as the type of group activities and projects that we encourage in our program to really allow you all to gain these skills needed to really emerge as future PA leaders. We also have an additional focus in surgery and emergency medicine. We found this to be a gap um, in many programs um, but is also a something that many applicants are looking for. So we wanted to ensure that we were offering coursework as well as connections with local ERs and surgical groups to ensure that you get that uh, necessary preparation if that's an area that you wanna go into. We offer robust interprofessional collaboration here at KGI. Uh, you have the unique opportunity to get a 360 degree perspective of what it's like to practice in medicine by uh, working with a PharmD program. We also have genetic counseling students, future occupational therapy students, uh, medical device engineering. We really have unique groups that we can collaborate with here. And I think will add to your education as a future PA. We offer early clinical experiences. This is something we're proud to offer. We know many of you are coming into the PA profession really uh, loving your patient interactions. And we, want, we don't wanna take that away from you for 15 months while you're in the didactic phase. So we encourage it during our didactic phase. We let you grow as you go along. So you're applying these skills that you're learning within the classroom into a real patient setting. And we think this will let you have the confidence and the skill set to really excel once you get into your clinical phase and then move on to professional practice as a PA as well. We have an additional focus in community health. This is something that's really close to our hearts. Uh, we are committed to the education and health of our local community, and we do that through some coursework as well as group projects that we have integrated into our curriculum. And finally, we have a commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion. Uh, this is something we hold dear to our hearts as well. Uh, we have recruitment and retention strategies to really make sure we have the most diverse faculty and staff and students uh, within our program. And we do that through different initiatives and pipeline programs that we have. And we also have been very intentional in how we have created our curriculum. Uh, we integrate uh, cultural competency and cultural humility training throughout all of our program, both the didactic and clinical phases. We don't silo it into one lecture or one course. It's really, really integrated throughout our curriculum. And uh, other concepts as well are really well integrated to one another. So you will never learn one concept in a silo. It's gonna be throughout uh, the entire process of you uh, learning these concepts, whether it's clinical medicine, patient assessment, diagnostics, it's all gonna be really woven in together. 
And you can definitely find out more information on our website. I wanted to make sure to throw this up there right now for you. So our website is kgi.edu slash MSPA. This will give you more information about our curriculum that I can't explain right now, as well as more about our program in general. Uh, we also have a few upcoming events to learn more, A, about admissions, which is next up. Dr. Eskis is going to cover that. Um, and that's admissions to any program, not just our own. And we also have a PA Summer Success Program to learn more about the PA profession in general. So please check that out at kgi.edu slash pass. Um, and we also encourage you to follow us on Instagram. And you can see our handle right there. So on to the admissions process. All right, so um, we believe we have a holistic approach to admissions. I know it's kind of a buzzword, but um, we feel that we are really approaching um, this process in any unique way. Uh, not only do we consider your academics, but we also consider you as a whole person. So your goals, um, your life experiences, what have you, you know, had to go through in order to get to where you are today? Um, and we have a measure that we call capacity to succeed. So it's not just your GPA. We think you are way more than just your GPA. Um, and we wanna take all of that into account in our admissions process. So these are all of our requirements by the numbers. And this is all um, detailed really well on our website again. So that's why, again, we wanted to show you the website early um, because we're gonna kind of breeze through these um, very quickly to make sure you have kind of the gist and to allow for any Q and A. But, um, basically we have a, um, the degree requirement. You can have a degree in anything you want. It doesn't have to be science-based. It just needs to be completed by June 15th of the year that you would actually be starting the program. Um, should you be accepted? We have the overall and the science GPA minimums of 3.0, um, which is you know, relatively consistent with a lot of our, um, programs in the area. And this is as it's calculated by CASPA. So you don't wanna rely on just your transcript that you have um, from UCLA, um, but you wanna make sure that any course you've taken anywhere gets rolled into that GPA. And we have seven prerequisite courses. Um, we didn't wanna have too many when we, so we were very thoughtful and intentional about which courses we selected um, to be as prerequisites to really prepare you um, for our program in the way that we're gonna be teaching you um, all the clinical medicine. And um, we're not gonna rehash the anatomy. We're not gonna rehash um, the things that you'll have gotten in the prerequisites. So um, they do need to be relatively recent, completed in the last 10 years. Um, we would prefer not to do an accelerated online course, um, if possible, the ones that are like two, three weeks <laughs> um, that you're trying to get all the information, especially for those sciences. So um, these are our seven prerequisites. So first is human anatomy and then human physiology. Those need to have a lab. So you can take those either separately or if they are in a sequence, but they need to cover the whole body. Um, microbiology, again, it can be general or medical, um, but just make sure that it covers everything that you need to cover to help prepare you um, for the PA program. So bacteria, viruses, and fungi at a minimum. And then an additional biological or health science course um, in any one of the following. So you can choose, um, kind of it's a choose your own adventure here, if you will, um, to be in any one of these seven courses um, or seven course types. And again, we'll detail all that on the website as well. So you don't have to frantically be writing anything down right now. Um, we require two different chemistries. The first can be any type of chemistry that you want. So if it's inorganic, if it's your general chemistry, um, but then the second chemistry, we would really like it to be in either biochem, medicinal chem, or organic chemistry. Um, the good news is the second chemistry doesn't really need a lab. Um, however, we know most of you will take it with a lab and that's okay. Um, and then stats, we think stats is really important, again, for the evidence-based medicine, for you to be able to understand the stats that you'll need um, when you are looking at articles and different things as a future PA. Our patient care requirements is a minimum of a thousand hours of some kind of direct patient care. Um, this needs to be hands-on, you need to be involved. So not just you know working at the hospital, um, cleaning up rooms after patients leave and things like that. We really want you interacting with the patients directly. So this can be obtained through either paid or volunteer experiences. Um, we also will accept shadowing as meeting the hours. 
Uh, but the higher level of um, patient care that you have, so the, the decision-making process that you're a part of, um, how much you know, your role really impacts the patient, those higher levels will be a little more competitive um, than the ones that have less of that direct uh, experience or with the shadowing. But we do accept all of those as, as meeting our um, prerequisites for that 1,000 hours. And then we have um, three specific letters of reference that are required. Um, the first one must be from a medical provider. So a PA or a physician um, or even an NP. The second one, we give you a choice because we recognize that you might be working in a lot of different areas or a lot of different fields. Um, and you might have a passion for research and wanna do a PA that's impacting the research work or be a PA that's impacting research. Um, or maybe it's a professor who really can attest to your ability to do well. Or maybe you work alongside a great nurse or a charge nurse at the hospital um, that really can attest to your clinical abilities. So um, we wanted to give you a, a, a choice um, for what kind of um, letter you can have for that second one. And then the third one can absolutely be from whoever you'd like. So we just ask that you not ask you know, somebody who knows you super well, like a personal friend um, or a family member. And make sure you're selecting people who will complete the letters, A, and B, who can really attest to who you are. So not just somebody that you passed by in the hallway, you know, a couple times um, a year, but somebody who has really seen you in action with patients and can attest to um, your skill, or maybe at a volunteer experience that you've done volunteership over and over again, who really can, um, you know, say who you are and, uh, and, and what kind of a PEA you're going to be. So... We do embed a supplemental application as part of CASPA. So uh, it's just a few short answer questions. It doesn't even take a half an hour to complete, um, but it really helps us to get to know you and see how you align with KGI's mission and our vision um, with the leadership and the entrepreneurship, because you know we really want um, to bring on PAs who are going to go out and transform their communities and be able to lead. We do have these additional preferences. So if you're underrepresented in medicine, um, the way that it's defined in CASPA, we have that spelled out um, all of this um, in our, on our website as well. Um, so you know, the first in your family to attend college, we think that's important. If you've had life experiences that require perseverance, um, uh, if you've served in the military, either currently or in the past, we wanna definitely um, award additional consideration in this admissions process. But if you don't have any of these, that's okay too. So um, we you know, definitely encourage you to um, still take a look at us. Our deadlines, um, we have a, a priority deadline of September 1, which just gets you an opportunity for early interviews and early acceptance. Um, or our main deadline that you know, for everyone is December 1. So December 1 of this year, um, if you believe you meet those prerequisites, we would love um, to get a chance to chat with you. Um, and if you aren't sure if you meet the prerequisites, our admissions team is amazing um, and will be more than happy to take a look at any courses that you've taken or any questions that you have about your patient care experience too. So, um, but I wanted to have um, Professor Adi just mention a little bit about our accreditation status since we're still a developing program, just so you all get to know what that's about. Um, as we wrap up here. Yes, so just a quick note before we uh, throw it to a QA. and a um, we did want to note that, as I said at the beginning, we are a developing program. We have applied for provisional accreditation through our uh, professional accreditor, who is the ARCPA. And you can see this two paragraph statement that we have here kind of outlining the process about it. Um, we have finished our application as well as our site visit. So we're just waiting for the, the commission's decision, which we hope to receive in late March or early April. Um, and the same for our regional creditor. So we'll find out at around that same time. So I wanted to let you know that. Uh, in addition, I wanted to take a moment just to explain what provisional accreditation is. Uh, so if we can go to the next slide, thank you. So um, for our provisional creditors, we have a status uh, that we've applied to, which is the provisional accreditation status, um, which is really more about the age of a program versus the quality of a program. So all programs who are new will be in this phase if they are accepted. 
um, and they will be closely monitored for those first five to six years uh, through different applications and site visits just to ensure that what we put in our initial application we're actually delivering to our students. So in many ways, it's a very uh, protective uh, measure for you as students if you were to come into a provisionally accredited program. But something to know if you do choose to go to a provisional accredited, accredited program that you would be eligible to graduate, earn a degree, and sit for our national certification exam, which is the PANS. Um, so you would not know years from now if your program was provisionally accredited or fully accredited at the time. It does not affect your future tra trajectory as a PA. So I wanted to make sure that's known uh, before we go into the Q&A session. And again, we wanted to throw these dates and times up again, as well as how to reach us. Um, and that email address is our admissions team. And, and as Dr. Eskis mentioned, they are wonderful. So please don't hesitate to reach out to them. All right, so. And you have three questions. So um, can you see the Q&A? Yeah, I can um, read it Perfect. for you if you'd like. Uh, Professor Adi or Dr. Eskis. Sure, uh, the first question, uh, what makes an applicant stand out for our specific program at KGI? So Dr. Eskis could answer that. Yeah, um, I believe that, you know, really for us, it's aligning to our mission and our vision and our goals. So um, we're not as concerned about um, your GPA, um, you know, per se, once you meet the minimum, we're really more about, you um, do you align with our mission? Do you um, do you have leadership experience? Have you done something you know brand new or or thought creatively and out of the box about um, a an issue, perhaps in healthcare? Perhaps you did something at your job that really stood out. So um, those kinds of experiences, um, absolutely, with the alignment with our program, um, help an applicant will that will stand out um, because you know a lot of us have patient care experience. A lot of us have. Um, you know, solid GPAs, uh, but that, that to us, you know, aligning with our mission and our vision is really important to us. Thank you, Dr. Eskis. We have another question. Does LS7B, so I'm guessing that's a class at UCLA, count as genetics for this program? We would need to research that. <laughs> yeah, we need to know. <laughs> so, um, but we'll be happy, we'll be happy to let you know. Um, absolutely. So, you could send that information to our admissions team if you have a question yeah. and they'd be able to give you a more detailed response back. Please, Absolutely. please do. Um, I have another question. I saw that the prereqs needed to have a letter grade. Is there an exception for COVID? Dr. Eskis, do you have a response to that? Um, we, you know, we are taking everything as a case by case basis. So um, we would we would welcome the inquiry. Right now, it's it is a requirement for us um, because, uh, especially we we've limited our prereqs. Um, so if you have a, a pass in anatomy, for example, um, you know, we it's important to us to kind of see the level of acquisition of what you've gotten. So, but I understand it's been a difficult year and or two um, with COVID. So um, we will definitely take a look um, if, if it's in a prerequisite specifically, um, especially if it's in a science, we'll need to you know, evaluate that on a case-by-case -case basis. Thank you. And I have one more question or there are two, but they're the same question. Are online labs accepted or virtual labs? Yes, yes, those are accepted for us. And then I saw one more about GRE for admissions as well. And we do not require the GRE or the Casper or PA CAT or MCAT or any other um, one because we believe that um, we haven't seen great data to show the linkage between that makes a great PA or not a great PA. So right now we are not. And you can have up to two outstanding prereqs when applying to our program. So, yep. Thank you. It looks like we have a couple more questions. Um, can we have I don't know if we have time. Is that okay, Christina? There's two more questions. Yes, go, ahead. go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you. Can we have pending prereqs when applying to the program? Yes, up to two can be outstanding for us as long as they're finished by June 15th of the year that you would enter um, the program. And then paying for PA school if there's scholarships um, right now. Um, most people get loans, <laughs> um, but we do have, you know, we have one scholarship that we're offering so far and we're um, for just a few thousand dollars to um, get people a jump start into the program, but we're looking for more opportunities all the time. Um, but as a PA, you know, going into PA school, most people take out loans. 
So I see another question about a thousand hours. Do they have to be done by the application or by the school start? So those have to be done and completed by the time you submit your application to CASPA. Absolutely. And, and as Dr. Eskis mentioned, um, we do grade your overall capacity to succeed. And part of that is the number of patient hours as well as the quality. So the more hours you get, the better your application will be, even though that is our minimum. Um, so continue to gain those hours. It's really important for your future as a PA. Um, in terms of working during PA school, we actually strongly, strongly discourage that because we can't make any exceptions um, if there's any issues with your work interfering with the program. It is a highly intensive uh, program, as are all PA school programs, um, so it's very difficult to maintain a job at the same time. And then, Dr. Eskis, you want to take the one about the PTA? Yeah, I was just about to type the answer. So. It really depends on the depth of your experience with the patients. If you are really, you know, with bedside um, and not just cooking meals or things like that with patient aid, if you're, a, if you're a physical therapy aid, absolutely that is patient care experience. I would put it under the patient care experience. But for us, CASPA, we know has PCE and HCE separate. We look at all of it because we know it can be really confusing as to where to put that specific experience. So we find patient care experience buried in health experience and vice versa too, so. Thank you so much for answering so many questions. And just for the, in the interest of time, we're gonna move on to the next presentation, but I see that the questions are coming. So feel free to type the answers as we move on to um, the next presenters. Raymond and Danica is here from Cal Baptist University. Hello, everyone. It's a tough act to follow, so thank you. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen real quick, and while I'm pulling that up, um, I am the graduate uh, admissions counselor for the PA program, and I'm also joined by um, one of our current students, Donica Loney. Um, she also serves as our class secretary and uh, pre-PA affiliate for the class of 2023. So I'm going to go over some um, distinctives of our program um, and the university as a whole. And then I'm going to hand it off to Donica to really share uh, what her experience has been like in the program. So can everyone see my screen OK? Yes, we can. Perfect. All right. So let's jump right into it. So. First thing I wanted to touch on is just kind of what um, makes CBU, CBU. Um, so we have four core values. The first of those is being academically prepared. So I don't wanna pretend that we're the only school out there that, that gets you academically prepared. I'm sure there's every school in here is doing that very well. Um, the thing that, the approach that we kind of take for our program is any degree or certification that you get through CBU is kind of thought of as a, an added benefit, but our real um, priority and what you, we want you to take away is the knowledge that you're learning in that program and how to apply it to the real world. So it's not just um, you know academic knowledge, you know how to apply that. Um, the um, second of our core values is biblically rooted. So um, probably doesn't come as a surprise, we are a Christian university, Cal Baptist University. Um, we don't require our students to be Christians to attend. Um, all of our faculty are um, uh, uh, self-proclaimed Christians, so it's kind of taught through that worldview. Um, now, with that said, again, students don't have to share that same worldview, but what we really hone in is on um, a great commission approach where we want to prepare you to go out into the world and make a positive impact. So I think that supersedes just the, the Christian uh, mentality for the program as well. And then uh, globally minded, that kind of leads right into that. So that has, carries a, a few different um, meanings with it for our PA program. Um, obviously, we want you to be able to go out into the world and be able to work overseas if you want to. We want to prepare you for any setting. Um, and that also goes for domestically. So that's kind of the second part of it. Um, you're gonna have the opportunity to work with um, students, or excuse me, for patients from all backgrounds, whether you're talking ethnicity, religious backgrounds, uh, cultural backgrounds, whatever it might be, we wanna make sure you are prepared to be aware of that as you go into the PA field. And that kind of leads into our fourth value, which is equipped to serve. Um, so this is probably going to be common with a lot of PA programs, but the thing that we really want to 
um, kind of hammer home and really get across to our students and instill in you is this idea of serving others. Um, you are going to be working with people in, in probably their most some of their most vulnerable states. We want you to be able to go into that setting um, and really touch someone and, and, and impact their lives. Um, and then moving right along here, I want to just highlight a few distinct things about the PA program itself. Um, we are a 24 month program and that's um, three semesters per year. Um, so it's a bit quicker than some other programs out there. It is much more consolidated. Um, so it does go by quick, but that also means a lot of work in a short time frame, which I'm sure Donica can uh, attest to. Um, our classes are Monday through Friday. It's like a full-time job. So we don't encourage you to work um, while you're in the program um, because most of your free time is gonna be taken up with um, studying. Um, and then our students graduate on time. Um, I think um, Donna can also speak to this, but our faculty really take a vested interest in each one of our students. You're gonna develop that one-on-one -on -one relationships with um, your faculty, your program director, um, they're going to be with you from day one till the very end. And then um, one thing that we always like to highlight is um, our program is only five years old, um, so we're relatively new. Um, but in those five years, we have won the Kappa Bowl, which is a um, state competition among PA schools for the last four out of five years. Um, so we like to pat ourselves on the back a little bit for that. Um, um, and then kind of the last thing, which I forgot to mention with um, academically prepared and our class sizes, is we actually have the option to increase our cohorts up to 80 students at this point, um, but we choose to remain at the 30 um, uh, student cohort because we want to make sure that that growth happens naturally and we're able to um, interact with our students in that one on one basis. So. Again, the, we always try to put the student first, and that's kind of the, uh, the priority of CBU as a whole as well. So I'll just uh, share a couple of pictures from the last uh, few capables that we attended. And then I am going to hand it over to Donica, but while she's speaking, I'm just going to keep our requirements on the screen um, just to kind of give you an idea of the time frame for our application process. Our application opens at the end of April and that goes through December 1st. Um, and then with that said, I'm gonna hand it over to Donica. Hi everyone, nice to meet you all. Um, yeah, so what Raymond said, basically our academically prepared, biblically rooted, globally minded and equipped to serve. That is, uh, that is a top mission of CBU and especially in our graduate program, um, all of the professors are very in tune with trying to establish that mission throughout every single class all the time, uh, which makes it really great. Uh, like he said, you don't have to have that faith foundation, but if you do, it really makes for a really beautiful environment to get to apply medicine and our faith towards the community. Um, we do also enhance cultural competency as well throughout all of our courses. Um, so all of that kind of comes together to then collectively help us apply these these foundations to to what we do in the future um, and and mostly that's again trying to strive to serve the underserved i think cbu definitely harps on that a lot as well um, as a student in a group of 30 um, it is really nice to have that small cohort uh, like raymond said it's personal um, this the teachers are there with you all the time professors are there to help you out no matter what your circumstance and getting to also know your your fellow peers in that close environment makes for really strong study groups. It helps you to be a lot more successful. Uh, in my opinion, that was one of the reasons why I chose to go to CBU. Um, also, it's really great. We get lots of guest speakers to do our clinical medicine uh, uh, instruction, uh, and that also helps us branch out locally. Uh, again, in the clinical year, we get to see those same professors who then be our preceptors, which is wonderful. Um, in terms of the requirements you see on there, I just really push that you guys keep your GPAs up. We are a competitive class as you heard we've won the capable multiple years in a row so we do like to strive high but that's again because we all have the passion for this career and and we love it we love it and we do it all day long 
don't have a job <laughs> during this program. That definitely won't work. We put a lot of hours in, but it's it's a lot of fun hours. And um, I would say the number one thing that I really enjoy is all of our professors take their time to not just give you instruction for the pants exam, but push you past that to clinical application. Uh, and I think that's what we all love. We love sitting and, and watching the, the clinical medicine classes. It wraps everything up into one. So they do great with the foundation, great with faith base. And um, uh, in the end, that clinical application is really strong and you get to do it alongside some really close peers. And it looks like we have a couple of questions here. The first one was, um, does being a Christian factor into the application decision? Uh, it does not. Um, we accept people from all faiths or no faith. Um, we always just like to be upfront that there will be that faith component to the way your classes are taught, um, but you'll never feel like an outsider or anything like that. We, we are very inclusive. And then next question here, are there any uh, great Christian communities within the PA program slash around the area. I would say the, the best community community is really going to be your, your cohort. Um, Donica spoke to it. She said that, you know, it is a, a, a competitive group of people, but it's not one that um, prioritizes competitiveness over collaboration. Um, so you're going to be a, a, a very strong little tight community um, once you're in the PA program. Uh, let's see, is the thousand hours of healthcare experience the same as PCE or is only HCE required? Great question. So we look at both. Um, we typically recommend anything where you're directly working with a patient when you fill out your application on CASPA to note that under PCE, but we are also reviewing your HCE towards that thousand hour um, mark. Um, one thing that is worth mentioning, we also recommend shadowing a PA for at least 20 hours um, to strengthen your application. That is one thing that can kind of help you stand out. Um, and on top of that, it kind of gives you a, a real world view of what to expect on a day-to-day -day basis um, as a PA. Uh, let's see, sorry, I actually missed one. How is the community area of going uh, to school in Riverside. Um, the area itself, there's a lot to do. I don't know how much time you'll have as a PA student to do all those things, but um, Riverside as a whole, is a, it's a nice little hub because you're literally an hour from the beach, you're an hour from LA, um, Disneyland, whatever, <laughs> whatever you're interested in. So I cleared up the questions a little bit so you can see, but there is a question that is actually interesting. And while I, um, the, during the presentation, I tried to find the answer to that and I couldn't. Is there a way to store letters of recommendations from a professor if you are going to apply for a couple of years? I know pre-meds use Interfolio, but it does not look like CASPA allows this. Do you know the answer to that, Raymond? I don't believe there's a way to do it because um, when you fill out the CASPA application, it requires interaction from your references. Um, so there's not a way to store that I'm aware of. And to uh, bypass any error, they will not want to get that letter and then let their CASPA fall through like to the next cycle because it'll delete them. So that's been a problem in the past as well. That's a good point. Thank you for bringing that up. And then we got another one here. How does the PA program contribute to the surrounding community? Um, so COVID has impacted that a little bit, um, but we do um, like to do a lot of community outreach within um, local clinics, that type of thing. Um, I know this is kind of a, a tangent on that, but one thing I forgot to mention is one of the goals of our PA program is actually to do uh, work overseas as well. And the wheels were kind of turning on that pre-COVID but that is something that is absolutely a priority for our program director and our faculty to really try to give back. Any other questions for Raymond or Danica? Um, you have a student, so might as well ask questions of her experience in the program. I think it's very valuable to hear the student perspective and uh, to know what it feels like to be in the PA program. Um, I have a question to Danica. What do you find 
the hardest in the program? Uh, definitely time management, I think, is the one thing. If you're an undergrad student, you're going to want to work on that um, before you go in, just because right off the bat, they're, you know, they're, they're getting speedy with how they're teaching um, to be expected, but I know that it's a, it's a shorter program than the average. Um, so you have to find time to, you know, balance your studying versus you got to give yourself your own personal time. I think all the students in our class last semester realized that there is some, there's enough for you to to help yourself out at all. Don't, don't disregard your own personal care, but definitely work on time management so that the time you do apply to classroom time is well used. Thank you. And one more question that I get all the time. How do we make sure that students know whether PA is a good fit for them? What did you do to make sure that this is the right place for you? I've always loved medicine. Um, I guess I teetered through the positions, you know, versus, you know, nurse and physician. There's a lot of different avenues you can go towards. Um, but in the end, for me, I kind of laid out like a pros and cons list. And the PA profession is really thriving right now. It's it's a growing profession that's we're going to require more PAs in the future. Um, you still have this really wide scope of practice that is really enjoyable. So if you love medicine in general and you've just been fighting with that path, I think it has to do with how you would like to see your future lifestyle. I think a lot of people harp on the PA lifestyle as being um, uh, a little more giving. Thank you. And there might be one more question in the Q&A. Uh, let's see, it says, uh, I know you mentioned the class of 2023. I graduate in June of 2023 and would like to start PA school in fall 23 if accepted. When should I apply? Um, so you can um, submit your application for um, the 2023 cycle when it opens in um, April. You can have outstanding coursework. Um, no, no, excuse me, sorry, I mixed up my timelines there. Um, so if you're graduating in um, June of 23, you would be eligible to apply for the fall 24 cycle. My apologies there. Thank you so much. So again, in the interest of time, I'm going to ask you to answer the remaining questions um, in typing, if that's okay with you. And I am inviting uh, Marshall B. Ketchum to... Um, Present Gloria, are you out there? Yes, there she is. Take it over. Thank you. Let me go ahead and um, share my screen with you guys. Okay, perfect. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Gloria Lopez. I am the admissions counselor here at MBKU for their PA program. So um, a little bit about our program, we were founded in 2012. We're located right behind Cal State Fullerton in the city of Fullerton. Um, our class size is of 40 students. We do have a system-based learning curriculum. Um, our PANS pass rate is 100% and most of our um, students are able to secure employment within uh, six months of graduating. We do have two other programs on board. We do have pharmacy and optometry. So the university actually started with just the optometry program on board and has since added um, farm and us PAs. And so um, our mission statement, I usually, we usually get the question a lot of what our program is looking for. So we like to uh, redirect our students to um, our mission statement, which I think speaks um, very true to what we look for. Uh, so our mission is to educate individuals to become compassionate physician assistants who can provide the highest quality healthcare in collaborate environment and dedicate to their communities and advance the PA profession. So um, we love to hear what you'd like to see in the future for the PA profession. Um, it's wonderful to get everyone's opinion. We like to hear what our students like to see in the future and just keep contributing as a whole to the profession. Um, so we do have continued accreditation for our program. 
And um, during PA school, so it is 27 months, um, your first year is you'll be in the classroom Monday through Friday, eight to five. Um, the curriculum is organized into a system-based modules, uh, which incorporates the anatomy, physiology, pathophysiology, clinical medicine, clinical skills, patient assessment, diagnostic testing, and um, the pharmacology part of it. So you kind of go um, through the whole system from head to toe. Um, we do award pass and no pass grades um, within our class just to eliminate competition um, within our students. We do encourage our students to work together. Um, we try our best to incorporate the other programs um, because when you go out and practice as a PA, you will be running into other professionals, um, the pharmacy students that maybe you went to school with, you'll work together um, with optometrists to provide the best care possible for your patient. And so since it is 27 months, we don't have an actual anatomy, um, I'm sorry, a cadaver lab on campus, but we do have these wonderful anatomy tables that um, our students are able to utilize during um, their, their didactic teaching here on campus. So um, all the bodies that you see on the anatomy tables were donated to science. Um, they are one-to-one -one ratio, so it's exactly um, how the person is as compared to a cadaver lab. Um, it's just kind of like on a big iPad that you can make cuts, incisions to. And it's great because one student can come in and practice on the cadaver and leave the lab. And then when the new student comes in, it's brand new, like nothing's happened to it. So it really, um, it's a great tool to work. So we also have a simulation lab on campus. So we have Sim Adult and Sim Junior. Um, during this part of your education here at MBKU, you do get to collaborate with our pharmacy students that come in um, and our SIM man can actually um, crash if the wrong, the wrong prescription is prescribed to them. And then it's up to the team um, to work together and do what is best um, for the SIM man. So these are a few of the rotations that um, we have right now for our students during their second year. Um, we do have one elective rotation that you can select. Um, I know we our list is ongoing. If there is a certain uh, rotation or specialty that we do not have, uh, we encourage our students to reach out to the team and we'll try and get that rotation included with our program. So you can go ahead and um, do one of your specialties in that specific location. Then we can just add it to the list if they're more than happy um, to join us. We also have um, Ketchum Health. So it is our teaching facility. It houses our optometry clinic and our family practice who's done by um, run by a wonderful Dr. Gro. He is awesome. Um, we're hoping to get our pharmacy up and running and kind of have a one-stop shop for our patients. If they come in for their physical exams, they can go downstairs and get their medication. They can get their eyes checked. They can purchase glasses and sunglasses. Um, so I know as patients, we're not always very good to follow up with our care. So we're hoping um, this helps our patients kind of get everything they need so they don't have to keep coming back um, for their care. So a little bit about um, our admissions. Um, these are some of our requirements. So um, we look at your GPA. It's not just your overall, it's your overall science, um, your last 60 units and the GPA for your prereqs. Um, we encourage you to have at least 1000 direct patient care hours. Um, I know it gets a little bit confusing with uh, patient, direct patient care and healthcare hours. So we do encourage you to reach out if you do have questions about that. Um, we do require a bachelor's degree, three letters of recommendation. They don't necessarily need to be from a physician or a PA. We just need them to be from someone who's known you for at least the past six months. And we, they are not from um, family members or very close friends. And we do have a couple uh, supplemental application questions that are already in CASPA and we do not require a GRE. Um, we don't see that it, it really contributes to the quality of students that we see. So these are our prereqs. So we have microbiology with lab, human anatomy with lab, human physiology with lab, 
um, biology in any area. So that's kind of up to the student um, to decide what they'd like to do. Uh, biochemistry or organic chemistry, genetics, statistics, and uh, general psychology. And we do allow two prereqs to be in progress at the time of application. They would just need to be completed by December 31st. So for example, our cycle will open up in April um, of 2022. So your prereqs would need to be completed by December 31st of 2022. So patient care experience, we do take a variety of uh, different experiences and we do encourage you to email us if you ever do have a question about if we accept a certain type of experience. I know this is a quite a short list, um, but yeah, definitely reach out and see if your experience um, would count towards it. The one that we see a lot is um, Scribe, because that's one of the big ones that doesn't require any type of certification or certificate to be obtained in order for you to um, be able to obtain that position. And we do take a few factors um, into consideration to take a little closer look at our applicants. So military experience, community, volunteer service, um, pre-health linkage program, um, critical thinking skills, teamwork skills, and all of that. And our deadline. So we do have a priority deadline of September 1st. Um, the hard deadline would be November first, and then we do um, interviews from December to February for our incoming cohort. And um, that's pretty much it for me. I just leave up our contact information on there, and I can take a look at um, some of the questions you guys have. Let's see. So do you subscribe for PCE? Yes. Um, scribing is accepted as direct patient care experience. Um, I heard MBQ offers a mentorship for pre-PA students, is this true? If so, where can I apply? Okay, yeah, for our PA uh, mentorship program, if you could uh, send us an email to our PA admissions email, and I'd be more than happy to provide that link where you can um, join the program for us. Uh, is it okay to get up one or two years to earn clinical? clinical hours and then apply. Yeah, definitely. Um, everyone's journey to PA school is a little bit different. Um, only you know what is going to be best for you. If you do need to take that time and to add those um, direct patient care hours to be more of a competitive applicant, definitely. Um, the PA profession has become a lot more well known over the last couple of years and the need and demand for PAs has definitely gone up. So if you want to go ahead and take that time to get your experience, um, go ahead and do that. Is CNA accepted for PCE? Um, I know many programs accept it, but I did not see it on the list. Yes, definitely CNA is um, considered uh, PCE. Like I said, that list is really short. We do take a variety of different um, experiences, even physical therapy, speech therapy, ABA therapy, um, and a couple more. So definitely let us know if you do have a question regarding your experience. Thank you so much, Gloria, for the presentation. Um, and um, if you get any more questions, feel free to type the answers in the Q&A. And now I'm inviting Robin to present Western University's program. Hello, good evening. Thank you so much, Christina. Now this is really gonna be a hard act to follow. All of you are so great. So let me share my screen really quickly. Can you all see that? Yes, we can. Perfect. Okay, so my name is Robin Johnson and I am the uh, Director of Admissions for our uh, College of Health Sciences, which does include our PA program, our doctor physical therapy program, occupational therapy, and we have a master's of science in health sciences. So a little bit about our program at Western U. It is 24 months, so full time. I'm sorry, full time. 
two years, 24 months exactly. Um, you do go straight through, so you don't technically get a summer break off. You are still in class. You're you're still in classes during that time. We are community service focus. So it's a part of our application requirements as well as what we do uh, in the program. So you're required to complete community, community service hours. And there is a project at the end of uh, your program, which culminates all of the community service that you've done so far. Uh, we have early patient care experience um, in a volunteer setting. So every year we take our PA students out to local elementary schools and they help give eye exams help give um do, do they do physicals alongside our uh, faculty and they also talk to the students about um how to be healthy and um excuse me how to wash their hands and just certain things that they would need to learn and know how to do as they grow up and as they're at their at that age. Uh, we are primary care focused program. And then we also have what's called our learning enhancement and academic De development office uh, lead for short. And what they really do is focus on helping our students get through the program. So, um, you know, they come in with great GPAs and they come in with a lot of experience. And so um, we help them get through that as, as we know, and you all will soon find out that graduate school is um, a different beast. And so it really is going to be important to have that academic support. There's also tutoring, we have counseling, um, for we have psychological counseling, legal counseling, and financial counseling available to all of our students and their families. And then we also host different workshops on test taking skills, study skills, time management, so that you have an understanding of what it's going to take and to be and be successful throughout the program. So one of the first uh, t assessments you get is the t is a study skills test. So we we see what type of person you are and how you learn as far as your study skills. And so that way you could use what you've learned from that assessment moving forward. Uh, just a quick slide on our student outcomes. So we have a 90% uh, graduation, on-time graduation rate. Uh, we have a 100% rate on our board pass rates and then 96% of our, our students go into the field and then a small percentage, 4% of them uh, actually go into an internship or a residency program. Like I mentioned earlier, it is a two year program. So you can see here that our year one is didactic, didactic, excuse me. So that's gonna be your on campus and your in on campus lecture courses, excuse me. Um, and then we also do what's called interprofessional education. And that's gonna be a class that you take with all students on campus. And so it's a small group class. You'll be put into small groups and you may be um, in a group with a dental student or a pharmacy student. Um, an optometry student. And so together you all will go over real life cases that have happened. And so as a PA student, you're going to put your perspective on the case. The same thing with a veterinarian. You may have a veterinary student uh, in your program as well or in your class as well. And so it really does uh, give an opportunity to see a different perspectives and learn a little bit about what each of the professions do. Because right now, as you know, um, we're very big on one health. And so everybody is a part of a team and we have to work collaboratively together. And so you'll, you'll be a part of that during your first year on campus. You'll have some simulated patient experiences and then you'll have a clinical research project. And then year two, that's where all the fun begins. That's gonna that's gonna be your clinical rotations year. You'll have um, another project or you'll, the project that you started in year one, you'll actually uh, present that project. And then um, you'll also be 
be preparing for your boards. So clinical experiences, I put here um, on this slide, a list of the required rotations that you'll have to do as part of the program. So you'll see there's family medicine, emergency, internal medicine, general surgery, geriatrics, pediatrics, prenatal care, and behavioral medicine. Uh, off to the side next to that, you'll see we have our electives. And so that is um, that is a partial list of the type of elective rotations that you can choose um, if you decide to. So, so typically our students will choose stuff that they're most interested in after being in all of the required rotations. It's an opportunity for them uh, to learn something new or get more detailed experiences in a different area. Here's another partial list of some of the clinical sites that we have. So these are some of the hospitals and clinics that our PA students do their rotations through. All right, so on to the application requirements. So we do require a bachelor's degree. Our minimum GPA is a 3.0, um, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about how to be competitive as far as your GPA is concerned. We require two letters of recommendation. Uh, we do recommend that one comes from a PA. And then we also require community, community service. So we don't require uh, direct patient care. Um, but we do require community service at least 100 hours. And so we found that as you're going to PA school um, for a reason, and we're going to treat you how to be, we're going to teach you how to be a great clinician. But what's difficult to teach is humanism and compassion and caring. So if you can show us that you have a commitment to the community, um, then we will teach you the rest in terms of uh, direct patient care. Here are a list of the prerequisites that we do require. So you can take a look and see, um, they're pretty similar across, uh, across most programs. Um, the one thing that I do want to uh, point out is the sociology. Um, it's really important that you take a general or introductory social sociology class. Um, and that's going to be the one that we will only ex accept. So make sure it's introductory. We have this really nifty tool on our prospective student website, which allows you to look up your institution. And so um, you can pull up almost any institution institution on our, our database and it'll list the exact courses that we will accept from that particular school. So as you can see, I do have UCLA up here. Now there may be some courses that you have taken that aren't listed on the database um, and that's okay, but we will need you to, to send us over a copy of the course syllabus and we will then take a look and evaluate your course <laughs> and let you know if it meets the requirement. Um, I would definitely leave, definitely recommend that if you haven't taken the, a certain course yet and you're thinking about it and you're thinking about um, and you want to use that specific course to meet a requirement, please contact us beforehand so that we can let you know. The last thing we want you to do is you know, take a course that uh, actually won't meet our requirement. Excuse me. Um, here is our uh, here are the competitive class stats, um, and I show this because it gives you an idea of um, you know what we what our GPA is, how many applications that we actually get each year. So we get around 2,000 applications. Um, we do require an interview. Um, last cycle, we've, we interviewed uh, 485 candidates and we seat a class of 98 students each year. Our average GPA is a 3.6 overall. Uh, Pre-rec GPA is 3.75 and our science is a 3.67. Um, I know that those numbers can be really scary. Uh, they are very high, but um, on the next slide, I'm going to talk a little bit about how to uh, be a competitive applicant. 
So the GPA is really important. Um, and that's because it's such a short program that we want to make sure that um, you're able to get through the program and handle the rigors of the coursework. Um, what we do recommend is that you retake courses. So for us, if you repeat a course, um, we will recalculate your GPA and only include the higher grade. And so that really allows you to strengthen your GPA much quicker than it would if you were to just take additional classes or do a master's program to, to help your GPA. And so we really encourage you to do that. Uh, you don't have to retake um, the course at the, at the first institution that you took it at. You can always retake it at a community college or any other institution. Um, as part of the application, what you'll do is uh, submit a repeated coursework form, and then you'll input the course, the course and the grade, and then you'll put the new course and the new grade. And so that lets us know to recalculate your GPA. So yes, the the average GPAs are really high, but um, a lot of those are also recalculated. So don't get dis discouraged um, if you're not quite at that at that GPA yet. And also remember that an is, it is an average. So we do have people who are below um, that and above that. Again, demonstrate the com a commitment to the community. So our minimum is 100 hours. However, our applicants um, apply with at least 2,000 hours of community service. Um, so that's about the average of what we see each year. Um, that can include tutoring, that can include helping at a church, that can include a food bank. Um, it could be done in a healthcare setting as long as you're doing something to, to better your community. Um, we also recommend that you shadow a PA or even interview a PA. Um, and the reason is a lot of the questions that we may ask during the interview are surrounded um, with questions that let us know you have an understanding of what it means to be a PA. So definitely uh, keep that in mind in terms of, you know, interviewing or getting in touch with PAs um, because they really are going to kind of help you navigate the PA world and get an understanding of what it takes to be a PA. And then uh, joining a pre-PA club or organization. Um, there's also some professional organizations that you could join as a prospective PA student. And so I definitely recommend that you look into those. Um, you can find some links on our website where you can join and become a member and they give you a lot of helpful information about just applying to PA schools about um, PA school in general what it's like to be a student so definitely check those out because all of that is definitely is going to help you during the interview um, and it's going to help you moving <laughs> forward as um, we begin to review your application. So uh, we are on CASPA and we, uh, the application opens every April and the deadline for us is always November 1st. Um, so you wanna make sure that you submit your application um, well before the deadline date. And I say this because there are times where you would, uh, pe people submit their application and realize that a certain transcript didn't come through or a letter of recommendation um, was never, <laughs> received and at that point your application won't be verified and therefore uh, according to us it would be late. So we don't accept any applications after November 1st. So you want to make sure that you have everything in order um, before the deadline so applying early makes it easy. Um, and then if you have any questions, here are a list of the admissions counselors that you can contact and it is by last name. Um, so I'll leave that up for a moment or so. Um, and then we also offer advising appointments. So you can sign up for an advising appointment. You can upload your transcripts and 
we can kind of take a look at your transcripts or your prerequisite courses, um, anything like that, just to make sure that you're well on your way and ready to apply. Um, even if you're not going to apply to us, we're more than happy to kind of help guide you through being a competitive applicant or maybe you're thinking about PA or also another program, uh, please feel free to contact us. And on our website, you'll see a big red button that says uh, sign up for an advising appointment. And um, we are here to help. Thank you so much, Robin. And this concludes the presentations, but we still have most of our speakers present. So if you have remaining questions, please feel free to put it in the Q&A. Um, if you have a specific question to a specific person, please indicate the name or at least the school that you're asking the questions from. Um, and yeah, so we're gonna wait a little longer for questions to come in. And for presenters, if you wanna share any links, any um, information with our attendees, feel free to dump it in the chat and they can definitely find it there. I also want to mention, since we have a little time left, that the Career Center offers pre-health um, advising. You can sign up for pre-health um, counseling appointments through your Handshake account appointments. Uh, we post new appointments every Friday, and we also have pre-health drop-ins, uh, drop-in hours every Friday at 12. You can find the link on our pre-health website and I will put the link to the pre-health website in the chat for your convenience. That's where you're going to be able to find more information on physician assistant uh, programs and how to prepare for it. So uh, please take advantage of all the online resources, counseling services. We help also with personal statement reviews, um, interview prep, most PA programs interview their top candidates. So we are here for you uh, if you need us. I've also added the um, link to our um, info sessions for the PA program in the chat. Um, we hold those monthly. So it goes over the um, application process in detail. And it's also a really good opportunity to um, hear from our faculty in the program. Thank you, Raymond. And I just added um, a resource that I know myself and a lot of students used, uh, the Physician Assistant School Interview Guide by Savannah Perry. Really good book, helps you kind of structure the questions. And um, if you are at a school that offers mock interviews, I would also suggest doing those two, three times over, it really helps you to get comfortable. And you could even, if you want to use some of those PA questions, you can give them to the person doing your mock interview and that will kind of help you to generate your answers. Thank you so much, Danica. And I wanted to ask you if there is one advice that you could give to students trying to figure out uh, whether PA is the right place or they have decided and plan to apply, what that would be. Uh, I think putting yourself out there and starting to work in the field, um, there's lots of ways that you can start working without being a PA first to, you know, confirm that you want it. Um, and you can work alongside PAs so you can actually see what they do and try to interpret for yourself whether or not you like the career. Um, so I had started working originally as a volunteer in a big hospital um, and then narrowed that down to being an ER tech in the emergency room and then to a medical assistant. So in all those different avenues, I was able to be alongside PAs and ask them questions, watch them work. Um, and you can see the environment they're uh, integrated into and, and um, it's really helpful to, to let yourself know whether or not you want to be in the position that they're in. Thank you much for sharing that. That's going to be very helpful because we get a lot of questions about how do I make sure this is the right thing for me. Any last minute advice from our presenters? All right, seems like we don't have any more questions. So I want to thank everybody for your time.
and for participating in this event. I'm very thankful for all of you that you take the time to share information, uh, Danica to share advice. I think it's extremely helpful to our students to hear directly from admissions representative and from students. So thank you so much for being here today.